the natural flow regime, so the flow regime that occur in rivers without any human alterations, it captures that seasonal and interannual flow variability. So it captures this variation within a year and throughout different years. And uh, this natural flow benefits not only one species, but the entire ecosystem. So at this moment, I haven't, I haven't mentioned some species in, in these specific examples, but the natural flow regime encompasses all of it because that's how the, the, um, these specific ecosystems evolve through time. Um, so, and, and the natural flow regime, not only it is in terms of quantity, but it also influences water quality, the food availability and the interaction with other species. So some of the assumptions for, for the environmental flow, for the natural flow regime is um, that if you do not understand how can you uh, benefit, support a, a given river, try to imagine what will be the natural flow regime in the absence of, of human, and that can provide you a very good understanding of what will be the requirements for that specific species. Um, the native ecosystem there evolved uh, through the natural flow regime for millennia. We have altered in the, in the recent story. Um, and similarly, the natural flow regime uh, provides this a time test uh, recipe to restore or to protect the environment that, that, a, given, uh, that, you, that a given river um, may be subject to. And something to mention is that this, this is the natural flow regime. These are nine uh, flow regime stream flow classes, natural stream flow classes that we have determined for the state. So we do know how the, how the rivers uh, naturally flow in, in California. That is, that is extremely cool. As I explained, some of the components of the natural flow regime might be low flows, might be these kind of peak flows. They are also called pulses and these uh, large flows. Sometimes they are called floods, sometimes are called peak flows. Um, but this range and this variation throughout the season provided uh, benefits for fish, for vegetation, for insects, for birds during the dry season, during these low flows, during summer, but also during the wet season, during winter or during the rainy season, where it not only connected in this case, provide adequate habitat for given species to benefit from the groundwater or that lives within the, the river, uh, but also uh, when you have these large floods, connected nutrients, bring it nutrients, um, expanded the, the, the channel, provided a transported sediment. The river was always connected. Now, current uh, alteration of, of, of rivers have modified tremendously the uh, timing and the magnitude of flows throughout the year. And, and basically that has produced some disconnections longitudinally, also sometimes uh, vertically definitely transversally on, on rivers, um, it provides very um, few habitat for sustaining during dry periods, but also do not provide enough large floods so you can keep uh, vegetation on the sides. It, is, it has definitely altered, uh, modified the... Uh, uh, it has affected, uh, again, these uh, riparian and freshwater ecosystems. When, when I was talking here about that it captures the seasonal and interannual variability, I was referring to this. So again, think that within a year, you have low flows, summer dry season base flows. You may have some pulses, uh, first fall flush or the first rain of the, of the rainy season. You have very large floods and you have a periods of transition from the wet season to the dry season. Typically, these are snow mill. This is within a year. Now notice that this changes within years. So you can see that this is a decade when we have one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, 10 years. And within these years, we have years that they were very wet. So for instance, these two, 
Uh, we have years that were not that wet, but they still have these very large floods that has this frequency every other year, um, five every 10 years as we're seeing it. But look, we also have drought years and these drought years, they were also beneficial because during drought years, you uh, naturally the, re the things that live in the river, so the freshwater ecosystems and the things that live around the river, along the river, the riparian ecosystems, they were stressed out and only the native vegetation, only the native species were able to evolve and were able to live and pass these periods of stress. So not only wet years were beneficial, but also dry, uh, dry years, drought years. How cool is it? So, so that's, um, that's why understanding this natural flow regime can help uh, uh, get your head around how the ecosystems evolve and this provide you a good good opportunity good um understanding on how to restore or conserve the the environment